NIL Now with Lauren Sisler and Kevin Jones. If you want to learn more about name, image, and likeness, you need to go to The Source. The NIL Now podcast from Headline Studio and Reddit highlights the biggest storylines with comments from key guests in the college and high school NIL space. NIL is not a cherry on top. It needs to be thought about as a part of these young men and women's future to, you know, further their careers. You should be able to leave college with something. Subscribe to NIL Now on Apple, Spotify, Google, or wherever you listen to podcasts. The Trailblazers, losers of nine of their last 12, haven't given up on the season, but I, Aaron Fentress, certainly have. I've seen enough. Stick a fork in them. It's beyond repair. Hello, I'm Aaron Fentress. I I just said, welcome to the Blazer Focus Podcast. I'm joined by Craig Burnback. As usual, who is already irritating me in the pre-show <laughs> pre-fight. He's going <laughs> to really fault. get me pumped tonight. I can already tell. Anyway, Craig, yes. I just went on the second half of the Blazers road trip. Yeah, I did. watched them lose four consecutive games, <laughs> counting the loss to your Knicks Tuesday night. Woo! And I experienced a range of emotions as I listened to them still talk about the postseason. And there was for one fleeting moment when I bought in again, which we'll talk about, talk about soon. But then I sat there at the Smoothie King Arena in New Orleans, drinking a smoothie, strawberry kiwi, by the way, and it was delicious. And watched this team walk out there and lay the biggest egg I think I've ever seen a so-called desperate team lay in a Definite must-win situation, and I was done. I pretty much wrote their eulogy that night. I was disgusted by it, shaking my head. Then I come back, and of course, I think there's no way they were going to beat the Knicks. But anyway, you ended up being right. Yeah. Back in January, you stuck a fork in them. I kept giving them outs. Oh, they need this guy back. They need that guy back. They need this guy and that guy. I still believe injuries hurt this team, but sure. regardless. The idea that Chauncey Billups sat there and said, we didn't have the urgency, we didn't have the intensity. I'm like, you just barely lost to Philly. You're playing a, a, a Pelicans team that doesn't have Ingram or Zion, just played the night before and lost, and you were down 39 at one point. Well, just yep. disgusted. So you were right, and I hey. was <laughs> not quite correct. Anyway, <laughs> I will let you speak now before we get to our rundown. Yeah, I'm not surprised by any of this. You know, I told you I didn't see any any real victories. And um, I'm a little shocked. I was a little shocked at how they showed up in New Orleans. Absolutely not ready to play. Not looking like they – I mean, that was – there was no effort there. That's the worst thing. And Bill upset it. And it's never good when your head coach, you know – ends a game and says, yeah, I don't know why we got outplayed like that. I don't know why the team that is completely banged up, played the night before, came out and smoked us. And that was the – they lost by like 17 was the final. Like, that wasn't even close. The bench bench dominated the fourth quarter. (laughs) Dominated to make it look a lot better. They were down 39 at one point, dude. 39. And again, Trey Trey Murphy – like, it didn't matter that Brandon Ingram was there. Trey Murphy was there. Dressed well, no. Brandon Ingram was there, dressed as Trey Murphy. Continue, sorry. Yeah, it was just uh, ridiculous. And the defense, like what? At this point in time, the worst. You you said in the beginning of the year that this team had to be mediocre on defense, and you thought they could be with Chauncey. They were Bullets. for like a couple months. They were, they were 10 and 4, dude. Take it away. Take away those 14 four games. They were seven, so when, they were and th- when they were 17 and 13, they were still decent on defense. But this team, this team is so bad at defense. Everything they do on defense when it matters is just mind boggling boggling sometimes. Like, I don't understand how you can let Trey Murphy, like, how do you let him do that over and over and over again? You know who's let Murphy do that? Over and over again in the NBA, nobody. It's never <laughs> happened before. It never They're happened high. before. I mean, it was like his whole team was like, hey, you guys, you should cover him. He's really good at threes. <laughs> like, look at the stats. Like, did they not look at the, like, the scouting report? Like, Murphy, one of the top, you know, 10 three-point shooters in the league. 
don't let him do it over and over again. And the Knicks play without their second best player, 16 point lead, 16 point lead. Like if you blow a 16 point lead and lose by two, it's really bad. But if you blow a 16 point lead, and get okay, blown but, but, out. But that 16 point lead was early in the NBA. 16 points in the first half means nothing. We all know you this. still got to give it up. You still got to give it up. But but that's shooting percentage is flip flop. We all know that. I, that that thing is overrated. The first half leads don't mean jack to me. Seriously, it's overrated. Well, it's like being up. Play, it's like being up seven zero in the first quarter of an NFL football game. Wow, it doesn't no, matter. It's not. It's like it's being exactly up like fourteen nothing. Maybe no. It does look, no. look? You just keep it. Their defense over and over again. Even against Philly, where they played really well for. Three and a half quarters, then it's like they couldn't get a stop. They could not get a stop. And yes, Embiid's final shot was fantastic. And I love how everyone said, played the perfect defense. No, you know what the perfect defense is? Him not scoring. That's the perfect <laughs> defense. Him not getting to his spot. I mean, after the game, Embiid's like, you know, that's my spot. <laughs> so don't let him get this. You know what I mean? Like, that's not he was like, defense. He was like, little right. Penny, I know my spot, fool. Right. Right. Like, <laughs> He was like, you know, that if I get to that spot, I'm good. And they let him get to the spot. You know who didn't let Damian Lillard get to the spot? The Sixers. Like, that, <laughs> that, that last second shot was garbage. Like, that's that's a perfect defense. That's perfect defense when you don't let the guy who you – everyone in their – I mean, they let it get him – get into the post in one second. He got the ball right where he wanted. And, yes – did Nurkic play as good of one-on-one defense as you can? Yes, but that's not how you win in the NBA because the best players in the world are unguardable one-on-one and sometimes unguardable, period. So the best defense is to not let them get the ball. So again, defense is just not good. Damian Lillard plays 38 minutes in a game. They get blown out at home by a Knicks team without their second best player. They made a a guy who played in the G League earlier this year look like an all-star playing point guard. Josh Hart comes comes back and just God. goes, did you miss me? I was trying to throw a triple-double on did you. Did you see when Josh Hart went over Watford, snatched the offensive rebound, yeah. and put it right back in? It was like, He's like that was the difference between a grown man who knows how to play this game and a, and a kid who's bigger Stronger, taller, but it's just a kid. He didn't box him out. He was too far under the basket, and Josh just jumped up, snatched it, put it right back in. All right, real quick. I was a, I wouldn't say I was forced to go on the second half of this trip, but I was encouraged to. Like, we didn't want to be away from them for six weeks. Nerf's going to come back. You know, it was legit. It was legit. I'm not – because the, the, the uh, CJ – excuse me. The loss of CJ and the Pelicans at home, I was pretty much like, because they went to four under. Remember, I said four under for yes. me. It was like, mm-hmm. right? And so I'm like, they're done. So I wasn't going to go. So Joel Owens like, yeah, I think we should get, just go to the second half. I'm like, ah, I'll go to boss. I've never been to, T- to TD Garden. Cool. I've never been to Wells Fargo. Cool. I'll go. They had me fooled to Philadelphia. I watched it. Man, that was some of the best basketball they played all season. They looked For amazing. three and a half quarters. <laughs> they were amazing. The way they were moving the ball, yeah. getting shots. Even, you know, Reddish had some turnovers. But when the, when the big three were, you know, unable to score on a possession, he he made plays. And, they just looked really, really good. And Philly would come back, and they would just push him back. It was like three times. Philly came back, and they pushed him back. And then Philly came back in the fourth, and Portland couldn't push him back. But I still left there thinking, hey, there, Nurk was off municipal restriction. Ant came back and looked amazing in his first game back in a long time. He did. Damn, they had Grant. I'm like, man, they're going to crush the Pelicans. And they're going to come home. It's still going to be tough. But if they play like this, they, they might be able to, you know, and then that they lost Dame, but that didn't matter. And 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 Billups said himself, he's like, even without Dame, we should lose a oh. close game, maybe if we lose. But they still shouldn't lose that game. And so I was done. And th- even the Knicks game yesterday, I was like, okay, I just I kept waiting for it to fall apart. Like I just I figured it would at some point. And then all of a sudden, your Knicks shoot seventy one percent in the third quarter, and they crank up the defense. And the Blazers, and by the way, without, without Jer- Jeremy Grant, just had no. Go ahead. The Knicks are a terrible shooting team. God, I know. They just <laughs> caught fire. But without Jeremy Grant, you needed someone with length and athleticism who could create a shot against that defense because they were just taking Dame away. And then Ant was trying to do things. And they got bigger guys on Ant, and they had no one else to go to. And Cam Reddish, you know, he's been playing pretty well, but he 
was mm-hmm. t- popping off about Thibodeau to the to the Daily News or someone, and then he went out there and looked. He looked totally stressed out, totally discombobulated, totally like just making silly passes and bad shots. And meanwhile, Josh Hart, the guy they traded for him in the pick, just looked like the winning player Lillard said he was. And to me, like if you just watch those two players, you saw the difference between both franchises and what happened to this team when they got rid of Hart because they just don't have anyone off the bench who's reliable to give you any. Uh, I mean, Nasir can have moments, but after that, you got a bunch of kids and then experience. And even Thibel and Reddish, they were benched on their previous teams and they're starting for you or first men off the bench. So it's just it's just a mess. And so now you're three games behind, three teams tied for eighth: Dallas, Thunder, Lakers. You have to catch one of them. And you have to do it in 13 games. I believe they'd have to go 10-3 and then hope one of those teams falls apart and goes 6-7. And then that gives you a chance. What, but then what, you still stop, have stop, you still have stop, wait, I'm saying, stop. Listen, listen, listen. You're listen. wasting your brain cells. No, no, I'm saying well, I'm saying why it's over. I'm not saying this is what they could do. I'm saying okay. this is why it's impossible. Then you got the Pelicans in Utah still in front of them. They gotta play the Pelicans again. They're two and one against them. They gotta play Utah at Utah. So and then and then the, okay so the the only teams with losing re- losing records they play other than the Spurs are six and one combined against the Blazers this season so <laughs> it is literally an impossibility Boston this weekend with the Clippers you got back to back with the Sp- the Kings coming up Damian said we'll know where we are in four or five games I'm like yep you know you'll know where you are because you're gonna go one and four at best in these next five games uh, so yeah it's done it's it's done and so I, but but I give you know. Hey, I'm not going to knock them for still believing. I asked Chauncey, I'm like, look, all the things you listed that are wrong with this team that hurt you guys, how are you going to fix it? <laughs> you got 13 games yeah. left, man. You, 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 it's not going to get fixed. They can't. They've no. been trying to fix that stuff for two months, three months. You know, and, and got, love Dame, you know, God bless him. He's not giving up. He's not a quitter. He's going to try and go and try and put 45 on, on the Celtics on Friday. And who knows? Maybe they pull off an upset. It happens all the time. But they're not going to beat them and the Clippers and go to Utah. And so, so it's done. It's over. I, I literally last night actually called up a mock draft. I started looking at the top 10 because, and I'm, I'm, I'm checking the Cubs schedule. I'm trying to match it up with the combine <laughs> and the lottery because I'm going to try and see me a Cubs game, see me some Dansby Swanson that week. <laughs> but nah, it, it's over. Yeah, I just, I love that. I, I love to hear you come to grips with it. Like, I've, I've been there for so long. It's probably- I tried so hard. <laughs> I know. You just, yeah, I mean, you were I, trying to drag me along. I'm just like, I'm like, I'm probably like your little kid. No, no, no. They're no, still no. good. They're still good. <laughs> it can happen. It can happen. Like you just said, it happens all the time. Like, beating Boston it happens all the time. No, no, it doesn't for the Blazers. No, no, upsets in the NBA. Uh, no, in the end. Right, but it yeah, does. That's, that's what, I mean. what I'm trying to say. The Blazers have shown you no reason to believe oh, they'll yeah. do that. They haven't beaten the they winning team since the Warriors before Valentine's February Day. 8th. Yes. Yep. It's not, they're, they're not good. They're not good at basketball. <laughs> I mean, that's it. And they, the, the laugh, worst but... thing that, the worst thing that can happen to them is making the playoffs. It's the worst thing that could happen to them right now. This team, what Joe Cronin did was not about this year. They're, I, I remember us say, I said they were worse after the trade deadline. You said they, you thought they might be better. And I'm like, they're not better. They're worse. And if they had been healthy, they'd have been. If no. they had been completely healthy, they'd no. be fine right now. No, no, yes. I don't think they would. Yes, absolutely. Well, that's like saying, yeah. Well, come, I come on, dude. Come on, come on. No. Nurk missed. Okay, okay. Let's not let's not get this twisted. Nurk. Okay, wait, 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 wait. let's not get this twisted. Was... Nurk missed a month. Ant yeah. missed a bunch of games. Okay, so that's two of your four best players. They're not built to withstand that. Had those guys been healthy this entire time, they, they wouldn't be six or seven under they'd be closer to 500 therefore they'd only be one game out of 10th or tied right now i can't can't argue argue that what ifs i can't argue on what ifs i I know but i'm just saying there's a difference between them being bad and them being bad because of thinking that nurkic thinking that nurkic wasn't going to thinking that nurkic was going to play 70 games in a season is to me was ridiculous because he never does he doesn't so you have to count that. Okay, anyway. no, no, but that's fine. All I'm saying is that had they been healthy, this they would be better yeah, than in a right perfect now. right in okay. a perfect world. They would. That's, have all, never that's had all I'm trade, saying. That's all I'm saying. They would. Well, then they went to trade Josh Hart. They would have still had Hart because if they had in <clears> your <throat> world, they stayed healthy, which and you think they'd be decent. They would have gone for because that's why they got Hart. They didn't get Hart to trade no, him. They, they right would have tra- traded Hart. I'm, I'm talking playing only. They would have traded Hart. 
they, they weren't playing over. Playing. That's fine. What I'm saying yeah. is, if the, in your perfect world, they would have been, a, you know, a better team. I don't think they're very. I don't think they were very. You know what I said? I thought they were a possible play in bottom end. But now I don't know. Now I just there's no reason to root for them to win games if you no. want this Trailblazers team to to eventually go for a championship with Damian Lillard. And I'm not sure what you know you get that you know close to 10 percent chance of getting a. Uh, a franchise changing player. Uh, that's what you got to hope for. You got to hope th- and you got to hope you get it right this time, right? Cause you got it twice. You know, last time you got the number one over pick, you made a horrendous decision. I'm not, saying <laughs> I went to ma- I'm not saying that others went to made it, but you choose Kevin Durant o- o- over Greg Oden. Your whole, your whole life is different. So your whole franchise is different. So now you just hope they get it right. I don't know what to look forward to. That's the part of it. Last year, you kind of knew, you knew what they were doing this year. They're still trying. They could try because it doesn't matter. Try and tank. You know, the, you know, the, you know, you don't have to try to tank when you're not good. You just, it's not a tank when you're bad. I'm just saying they're going to lose. Right. No, I'm not. Rea- I'm not reacting to you, dude. I just, okay. Just check the NBA combine with the Cubs schedule and the Cubs are on the road. <laughs> that week. Uh, hey, you go see a White Sox game. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. I, need call, I, need to, I need to call the commissioner and get that fixed. <laughs> but, like, I don't even know. Like, on this team, I guess you try, and I don't know why you continue to play. I mean, Lillard played 38 minutes last night in a blowout loss. Like, I don't know why you do that anymore. And there's nobody, okay. right? Scoring title? Scoring title? Should he go I for the scoring title? He needs to average 38, I think 30, I think calculated it today, 38.8 per game the rest of the year to get the scoring title. <laughs> or to pass where Embiid is right now. Well, I, <laughs> no. No, I wouldn't do that. No, exactly. I'd sit him and hope. I don't want him to get hurt, and I want him to finish out. I mean, I'd play him. You know, if he wants to play, play him, but don't play him 38 minutes in a blowout loss. Like, what's he doing in the fourth quarter? You know, if, like, if I he, get – I get you have to if you're the coach. You got to try to win, but I wouldn't. Yeah, if um, I mean Dame, Dame's the kind of guy who's not going to quit till it's, they're mathematically out, right? <laughs> they could their magic number to be eliminated could be one with eight games to go, and he's going to play unless uh, they tell him to win all eight. Well, well that's what I'm saying. Yeah, tell yeah. is different than ask or you know leave it up to him. That's what I'm saying. So yeah, so for me, if they lose both games this weekend, I, I think yeah. You seriously say, "Look, dude, there's two weeks left in the season. You know what I mean? Let's let's just shut you down. You have a, your calf. There you go. Calf's been bothering you off and on. It's your calf. Yes. You'll miss, we'll say calf. Yeah. We'll say we'll say you're out for Utah. We'll say you're questionable. You know, you miss, and then it's a week left, and then we'll just shut you down um, because we don't want something crazy to happen. Like you're yes. healthy. You're healthy. Yes. Don't, we don't want you to tear something that requires off season surgery, right? And yes, you, you, yes. Go, you come back in October, but you got to ramp up. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So, yes, I'm with you 100%. And then you, you assure yourself of going into this whole thing with the sixth worst record. And now you yes. have, which is where they were last year, and they fell back to seventh. But, but now you have a chance to get okay. yourself a high pick that you can trade. And, and, and you know, if they want to have all their chips and make some crazy move this summer for whomever, a lottery pick would help you in that endeavor, in that quest. So, yeah. I'd give Dame two two more games, and then they lose them both. They're out. My my He's question out. is, you'd want to su- you'd want to sit Nurk, but you can you like because you got nobody over six foot seven. You got, you got so you, like how does you, you bank you bank some Watford? You just played a month and a half I, without I, Nurk. You can play I, the two weeks without Nurk. It's true. I'm Everyone, just joking it's gonna about be like that, last like, year, dude. People are just yep. gonna start having stuff. Two way players. I don't know who they are, but stuff. they're about to get some minutes. They're about to get. They got that one big guy. I keep reading the, like little blurbs about what he's doing on a two way contract. He'll they'll be playing. Oh, two John ways. Butler. Yeah, yeah you John Butler. Play. Be start, yeah, he'll be starting at the four. No, no, no. Here we go. Here we go. You got who would be your point guy? Be Keon? No, the Ryan Avanos. What is it? Yeah, Archer. Was it Archer? Ryan Avanos. Archer, Archer Villanova. <laughs> Yeah, my bad, dude. I, I should know your last name, but I refuse. To. Anyway, him. Yep. The point you got Shaden at two, and he's good. You, you got uh, Matisse at the or and um, Cam rotating at the three, and Little and Little and Watford at the four. Butler backing them up. You start Eubanks. Yeah, you're not gonna win a game the rest of the year, bro. I, like again, I don't know why it matters. I mean, you want to get in the, you, you want to roll the dice it and hope matter. for a. 
changing, you know, I, I think, I don't know what's available, but I think if you get, you know, they're talking about two top, you know, Wemby and, and you know, Scoot Henderson as being possible franchise altering players. So you hope to get there and, um, or you try to figure out how to turn around into another all-star and hope that's enough. But, um, yeah, you know, there's no there's no reason to risk Damian Lillard hurt like pulling it, you know, Achilles going or knee or whatever in the last few games. None. I agree. So where are you at on Chauncey? Let's just talk let's just talk about this just because some Got people to. are writing in about it. Some people are, you know, well, people on Twitter are always freaking out about silly things. I it, look, I'm not gonna sit here and pretend that I'm watching games and going, Chauncey should have done this. Had they done that, yep. they would have point differential with chains by blah, blah. You know, people crapped all over stats for all these years and they were winning going to the playoffs. And so now they're not going to the playoffs. So, of course, Chauncey's going to get some of the blame for that. Uh, but I just, you know, th- this team was not built to be good without being healthy. And they haven't been healthy enough. And they're playing a bunch of young. And ex- I broke this down in a story today. So if you look at who they're playing, other than Dame, Grant, and Nurkic, you really don't have anyone with any real valuable experience in winning situations. Ants, first year starting. Uh, you got Nasir, who's never contributed to a strong Blazers team, really. Uh, Thibel and Reddish have some experience in that background, but they were benched, as we talked about. Um, Watford's a young end, Sharp's a kid. Uh, Eubanks never contributed to a winning season in San Antonio. So, you're, you know, Chauncey has made this – I'm not trying to say their excuses necessarily, but he's pointed this out numerous times, and it's just – I mean, it's it's, it's not not true. Uh, so I, I just – it's hard for me to say some other coach would have made a better use out of what, what they've had to work with this season. And if there is such a coach, great. Fire Chauncey, go get him. <laughs> but I just don't believe there is that type of coach. Well, there, a lot of them are taken, but Terry Stotts is out there. I don't think Stotts. I mean, come on. I'm just kidding. I mean, look, I think this team, I think I would not, I don't think it matters right now to evaluate him. He's not been, there's no way you could say he's been good. You can't. I mean, the the effort part is a problem. And And he said it. Like, when you come out and you play like you did against New Orleans, coach gets blamed for that. It's his job to get them ready to try. They're not ready to try. That's on the coaching staff. He's not the only one. Scott Brooks is a really good coach, you know, in the NBA at times. And he's supposed to be a defensive coach. He's there. They're not reacting to him either. The whole coaching staff, you can't give him a, a you can't give him anything a, a really a passing grade because the team hasn't competed at times. But that doesn't mean I think it's time to give up on him. You hired a guy who never coached in the NBA before. You hired a guy who had one year of associate, you know, uh, uh, assistant, assistant coaching experience. Yeah. Last year was – you throw it out the window last year, doesn't matter. And this year, you say, okay, I hope you learned something here, Chauncey. And unless a team gets sold, and that would make – and that's probably not going to happen before next year. But if that were to happen, sure, new new ownership wants to go in a new direction, new money. But I don't see – if you believed in Chauncey, and I know it wasn't – Joe Cronin technically didn't hire him. He's not his guy. Uh, but he is – he's the owner. I don't know how you even – what Jody Allen is, but the people making the decisions hired Chauncey Billups. So you go again next year and you give it a try, but, and see if he learns with a team that you hope is better. And if he continues <coughs> to not get effort, then, you know, in the NBA, you, as a coach, your team has to have effort. The best coach, Spolstra, they they've always had have more, They've had more effort than not. I, I don't think that's, I don't know. You blow a lot of double. I get it, but they they lead the league in blowing double figure leads. That to I know. Me is so a we, problem. We, I know. That's but a problem. We, we asked. We asked. So Damien's take on that. And actually, Chauncey said similar things. But Damien's take on that was that uh, again, like I said, the first half leads to me. I just don't care about those really. The twenty five point halftime lead to the Lakers. Yeah, that's bad. Being up, you know, if you're up in the teens in the third quarter, yeah, that's bad. Being up in the first quarter or even the second quarter, that's just worthless to me, especially in today's NBA. But um. You know, what Dame talked about was 
you know, in the early parts of the game, the game is, is different. It's, there's less pressure. It's fresher. You're yep. just coming out there and maybe you play looser. You get hot. You build the lead. Second half, other teams are adjusting to you. Now you got to adjust back. And if you don't have the maturity level or the, the basketball IQ to make the counter move to the counter move, you're going to struggle. The intensity ramps up. So a team with more veterans, more experience and big and, you know, uh, high leverage in uh, situations is just going to be better than what you are. And so if you're in the, the Knicks started trying to take Dame away, make life difficult for Dame and a team of Ant, Nasir, Thibel, Reddish are not going to scare anybody. Like it's just, it's just not enough firepower to generate offense that way. That's where you need Grant and another dude. Then it's a different story. So that's why I just don't feel like Billups is supposed to make some kind of magical adjustment. And all of a sudden, all these pieces are just going to fit and stop the comeback against a better team. The Knicks are flat out better. So blowing a lead against an inferior team is one thing. Blowing a lead against a team that's flat out better than you in the NBA, we have more experience, more talent, more stars. Doesn't, I'm not going to blame the coach for that. And especially with, especially with the shooting percentage thing. Because a lot of times there's a difference between I'm kicking your ass and I shot 68%, you shot 32%. Was your 32% because I locked you down? Was my 68% because you can't stop me? Or was it just that I began hot and you began not? And then so many times I look at the quarter by quarters and so many times you look at this team shot 68% in the first quarter, that team shot 32. And then the second quarter, it flips to 54 39, and boom, we're tied. And everyone's like, we're really late. No, the shooting balanced out. You, you don't shoot and go make, miss, make, miss, make, miss, make, miss. Sometimes you go make, 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 make. The other team goes miss, 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 and you're at 15. Is that going to stay the entire game? No, it's probably going to balance out, especially when the other team's better than you. <laughs> so that's why I don't freak out about that or blame the coaching necessarily. I, you know, we can go through all the things and why they're this or why <laughs> they're not. They're not. I'll admit, I don't think they have the talent to be a very good team. So I'm the one that said the whole time that I thought the play in or maybe an eight seed was their hot, you know, was their ceiling. Right. But when I look at, it, I'm not sure what he's doing well yet. I'm not saying he well, and can't, that, and that's fair. But and that's I don't fair. Know you, what you, right? You know, he hasn't he's elevated doing. the team, right? Ha- their defense like, is worse. He's not. The defense isn't better, right? So they're not elevated. Whether whether it's not having the horses or not, he's not elevating them. Therefore, if you're not elevating beyond what your capabilities are, then we can't say you're doing a great job. But we can't necessarily say you're doing a bad job. That's Drew funny. Eubanks. So Damian Lillard's played his best season maybe ever. So I'm going to touch Chauncey. But I'm not going to give Chauncey credit for Damian Lillard. I'm just not going to do that. Yeah. Um, and to me, when I look at – I know you think little uh, – I, I think I, I think that, you know, maybe not – maybe the expectations for little were too high. But – and I just don't see other – Drew Eubanks to me as – played great and and that's the one guy I would say he's outplayed what anyone expected but I know you like how Simons has developed under Chauncey and I guess that's the best I don't see it that much I think Simons was going to be this good no matter what um but no one else is elevated I mean, and, and gives Chauncey credit so that's fine. And, uh, and maybe that's true. But you know what I'm saying? Like, they're having – Nurkic has not gotten better for sure. Grant right. had started off red hot, but he is leveled off to not being better than he was. You look at, you know, Watford, he's got minutes, and sometimes he looks really good. And other times you're like, well, you probably should have covered the guy who dunked there. You know, and, um, <laughs> yeah. you know, and Little's had his ups and downs, which you expect. I'm just saying, like, right now, if you said, so what is Chauncey Billups good at? I don't know yet. Right. Incomplete. I, I, Incomplete. One hundred percent, but I'm not. Yeah, but we're on the same page that we're not going to be like throw them out. Nah, uh, no, but, but, but here's but here's the, but here's the thing. Like, you know, part of what they do this. Let, okay, let's say, and this is so. Okay, here's something funny. <laughs> so, Gina Mizell covers the 76ers for sure. the Philadelphia Inquirer, and she used to work here in Portland. You have probably been around her a lot. Oh yeah, I know Georgia Gina, State, right? Yep. So, I was sitting right next. We were sitting next to each other at. Doc Rivers and Billups' pregame press conference before the game. And I go, hey, have you heard this one? Have you heard this one? I, I was doing uh, the SNL skit. Have you heard about this one? Have you heard about this one, Steph? Remember that? <laughs> and then tell some fantastical story. Anyway, uh, and I go, have you heard about this Embiid to Portland thing? And she kind of looked yes, at me like, awesome. what you talking about, Willis? And I go, right. well, I'm Portland. The, th- the theory <laughs> is 
<laughs> that James Harden is going to leave for Houston. And then the Blazers are going to make a trade for MB. And she just looked at me like, shook her head like, mm-hmm. I go, I know. It's more than likely that, you know, the, the 76ers would wait out Portland and Dame. I'm not going to give you MB right. to make Dame happy. I'm going to let you, let you, you know, sweat what Dame's going to do when you can't get someone like Embiid. And then when Dame says it's time for, to trade me, then I'm going to come to you and say, trade me Dame. And she was like, well, I could definitely see maybe Harden leaving for Houston for personal reasons, but I don't buy that yet. And I definitely would not see that they would out, be out there trying to s- trade Embiid. They're going to try and go out and build around Embiid, right? right? You're not going to give him up unless he demands out. Yeah. So, if, so, you know, so to me, that's just a pipe dream fantasy. And I'll say, and, and, hey, I would love to be wrong. So, you know, I don't like to be wrong ever. Oh. There's certain situations where I would love to be wrong. Like when they, the Bears drafted Mr. Trubisky, and I'm like, eh, I would have loved to have been wrong. <laughs> I was not. I don't think there's any way in hell Portland's going to get Joel Embiid. I will come on this podcast and say, I was wrong <laughs> if it happens. And I'll be, so if, I'll be right if, if with that you. Pipe, Right. If Siakam doesn't happen, if that doesn't happen, but what you have to go get some adults. Yes. If your biggest play was OG, right, and it cost you Ant, and you start Dame, Thibel, OG, Grant, Nurkic, that could be a really good defensive team, and you got plenty yep. of offense. And then your bench needs to be some grown ups. And one of the things Chauncey talked about before the game was how back in his day, when he played, they had these OG veteran guys who were basically there to raise the youngins. And he said those types of guys helped him. He goes, I don't have that here. Dame is the OG who's got to be the superstar, carry the team, and help try and raise the youngins. And I made, I made a quip. I was like, did you guys call them like bench nannies? <laughs> <That's amazing. laughs> the way he said it, raising the youngins. But they need to get some veteran guys who their names are not going to blow your socks off, but just 31-year-old veteran grown men who know how to play some defense and know how to set a screen and aren't going to get lost on defense that you can bring them off the bench and play them like Aminu who everyone cried about because he couldn't shoot three or Harkless and all his imperfections. But those guys brought you length and defense and they were adults. And that's what this team has to have because everyone loves, loves Shane Sharp. He's a 19 year old, 19 years old for every fantastic dunk he has. He makes like 10 mistakes. I guarantee his one-on-one film sessions are just, you did this wrong, you did that wrong, you did this wrong. You, did this. you need some grown-ups on this team. Regardless, but if you can't get a superstar, you better plug in, plug in some vet dudes on that bench so you're not bringing in Jabari Walker, Watford, and Sharp for big, important minutes because they're just not ready now, and they're not going to be ready next year. Another thing about those guys is for the coach, he knows what he's going to get. You don't have to, you know that's what, what this guy does this. You know what I mean? Like, right, and, and, right. I mean, Al Harford was once a star, but Al Harford comes in. He know what he's going to do. He's going to play defense. That, that kind of dude. Threes. Hundred percent. That's it. Yep. And and they don't have that. And nope. And that's a, you know, that's a problem for a coach because you talk about Cam Reddish. You don't know. You don't know. That's why he doesn't play for two franchises. Not right. because he doesn't have talent. Not because he can't do amazing things. But because you don't know. And he's going to blow it. And that's why I'm, you know, I'm quote unquote down on Reddish because two coaches have decided they couldn't count on him. And eventually he's not a star. And to be a role player and to last in the league, you know, you need to, to, you know, have the coach not just believe in you, know what you're going to do so he can design an offense and a defense around you. And that right now they, they can't do. Um, so I 100% agree with that and that he hasn't had that. And as a young coach, it's hard. Uh, but you know, at some point in time, you can't you can't stink as a coach in the NBA for three years, no matter what, no matter what right. happens. Right. You don't last right. three years. Like right. you can, it's not your, Mike Brown has been fired before because it wasn't his fault, right? Because he got put in situations <laughs> where the the they were just they just wrong thing. Like, oh, LeBron's not here anymore. We stink. Not your fault. Fired. He's a <laughs> he's a really good coach. And he's showing it right now on Sacramento because he's got some talent. But there's no way you can't last. Sometimes you can't last two years. I mean, heck, if you know if you're you're coaching the Nets, you can't you can't make it eight games, you know, like until they give up on you. But yeah. it's just the way the nature of the he has to next year. He will have the first, in my opinion, depending on how where the you know you get the first half of your third year, 
And if your team is still really, really bad, even if it's not your fault, you're gone. So, uh, okay, we've we've bashed these guys enough, and you let's you go. made me feel bad about myself, Craig. Thanks very much. So let's move on to a no look pass from Mister Thine. True or false? The Blazers' ills can be cured if the ping pong balls fall the right way. I don't think Wait, I can. Of course, of course, they get the fun, no, the, you know they yeah, if they get the first pick in the draft. They're not. That's not going to make them a contenders. That kid's going to be franchise 19. changes. Right, fine, fine, whatever. It changes everything. Though no, you have a guy that people are saying is a a unicorn amongst unicorns. He's a yeah, seven changes. foot ten inch ten inch point guard who hits fadeaway threes like we've never seen. It. <laughs> of course, I mean it's the whole world changes when you get a guy like that. So one hundred percent, the world changes when they draft the greg odin everything changed it did change for the better but the feeling of your no. your team if you have that we're, guy we're talking and, on the court in production fine we're not i don't talking know about fantasy be. two years okay. two years okay. luka Doncic is fantastic fantastic potentially, and he was it poten- you know it potentially it potentially could change well, it's definitely going to change things for the future. I don't think it changes things for next year they still have to get some veteran guys in here he didn't say next year saying. did you say what he said what did you what say, did say? I don't remember. Their exactly ills could they? Their <laughs> ills could be cured. Their yeah. ills could be cured if the ping pong balls all go the, the right defi- way. All the deficiencies, everything well, not, will be forgotten. Not all of them, because they they still got ownership things and they got other stuff. But no, your still, whole world changes if you if you get that. LeBron James changed the Cavs. They were instant contenders. Now is is Wemby is is he that? Everyone seems to think so. They were not so instant me, contenders. They barely made the playoffs as rookie. I don't think they made the playoffs as rookie. Oh, no, did they? no, okay. I'm, I'm just. You're right. I mean, I'm not talking. They're about instantly tomorrow. relevant. They're instantly relevant. They were instantly relevant, and then they were continuous contenders every year because of one player. I mean, obviously they had Kyrie Irving when they won a title. They had love, whatever. I'm just saying, yes, it can. Yeah. If this guy is what everyone says he is, and you get him, he will change any franchise that gets him. <coughs> and, and that, and, and you know that. That would change. You wouldn't be trading um, that pick. <laughs> you know I mean, you would be just saying, "Okay." And you wait, have wait, okay, let, 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 well, okay. Let's talk about that, though. Oh hell! If no. you have the number, hell no. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You're telling me you wouldn't trade the number one overall pick for Embiid? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. No, I, okay. I'd have to. You know, I but I'd have trainer to think for about Tyler it. Hero and, you know. <laughs> yeah, but that doesn't happen. Duncan right? Robinson. The six, but the Sixers okay. aren't going to make that trade. Well, oh, wait, wait, hold on a second. If Harden left, the one thing I think that would make the 76ers go, hmm, would be this kid. Absolutely, 100%. Everyone in the league, yeah. everyone in the league would go, hmm. Hmm. I wouldn't, you know what? I wouldn't, I don't think I'd do it. I don't think I'd do it. Yeah, oh, I don't think yeah. I'd do it. Oh, you're crazy. You're crazy. Yeah, I might be, but I don't you, think you I'd do want it. Some, you, it's, it's the number one overall pick and some salary match. You're starting Dame, Ant, Grant, Fiebel, and Joel Embiid. You're contenders. And, and if you want, because if you want, you take Ant. If you can take Ant and a couple picks and go get OG. Joel Embiid is really good. Now you're, really now you're good. Dame. Stiebel, OG, Grant, and Embiid. You're yeah, winning the know. West. I can't answer and yeah, this question. And, and, and three or four years, it may suck watching this kid be amazing, <laughs> yeah. but you got a title. There's no way that group stays healthy they don't win well, the title. That's a lock. Well, that's nothing's a lock. a lock, but yes. No, no, no. But I Dame, would. OJ, Dame, okay, Factor Adventures. Dame, OG, Grant, Embiid is a lock championship. If they don't have injuries, that's a lock yeah, championship. That's what I meant. Yeah, I don't. Sure. I mean, I love this. Whip. I, you just gave me a trade that I like will never happen. And I, I know. Come up with a good, and I can't okay, come up with okay. an answer. But like, what if no it was a three-way deal and you got LeBron <laughs> and Jason Tate? No, I'm kidding. Yeah, this is a ridiculous, you know, fantasy. <laughs> I'm just saying, I would love to see the ping pong balls go the Blazers' way and get it right once. You know, it's really just – you just keep twi- – twice one in your life. Just I'm just saying tw- twice. 
people make fun of Fran. Like people are on Twitter, Blazer fans. They love to make fun of the Knicks on Twitter less this week than, you know, know, this year than ever, but they love to do that. And I don't ever go back at them because I I don't root against the Blazers. I root for the Blazers. My son's five. He's a Blazer fan. Now he told me, he's like, I like the Knicks, (laughs) but I'm from Portland. So I'm a Blazer fan. Take some dad. I'm no, representing I'm P-Town. He's representing P-Town. Hey, I'm happy for him, you know? I'm good. He just has to root for the Yankees. That's all. He can root for oh, okay. the Pain. But that's, that's a oh, deal breaker right there, right? Okay. The Yankees have brought me joy. The Knicks relationship <laughs> has been the most abusive relationship I've ever been in in my life. I've never won a title. It's awful. So I don't wish that upon my son. But, okay. but like, I want to be like, hey, yeah, the Knicks struggle. But they, they made the playoffs. They Like you, they went to the championship of my lifetime, and they lost. But they were really good for a while, and they picked Patrick Ewing when they had the number one pick. So not so bad. <laughs> you know, yeah, right, you had right. the number – like, you didn't pick Michael Jordan, and then you didn't pick Kevin Durant. Like, somebody's franchise <laughs> made some really bad mistakes. You know, like, we have terrible – our ownership, I don't like him. I'm not a fan. Like, all, all this stuff is true. But, like, come on. Don't try to kick on the Knicks. Like – when you like you're you're this like you're the you know, the Lakers or the Celtics or you know another organization the Bulls. with a lot of wins. Yeah, yeah. I mean the Bulls. Yeah, the Bulls can't know, really been talk. A, been a while. Yeah, but we got six. That the math of six stretches out forever. And you know um, what you did? That's like a hundred you know year. Did? What you drafted Michael Jordan? So yeah. Like you didn't mess that up. Yeah, you picked him, right. but others didn't. <laughs> All right. Oh, well, boy. I think we agree. It's done. Yeah, it's all done, see, but the kicking uh, and the screaming. Uh, what are we rooting for? Go Fiebel. See if he can shoot. That's what we're going to be watching. <laughs> Fiebel's a beast. He can play D, baby. He can. All right. Uh, so I think we're in agreement. It's over. Uh, I think they shut down Dame after the two more losses. And uh, yeah, we'll play out the string. And I guess I might end up at the combine and. Enough NBA draft lottery, but pissed because the Cubs are out of town. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I got I got nothing else. Go Knicks. <laughs> Go hey, they did look pretty good. All right, thanks for listening to the Blazer Focus Podcast. Please click that subscribe button and give us a five star positive rating. Even though we were completely negative for almost forty five minutes, and we'll be back next year talking about. Next year, next time. Sorry. Next Next week, talking about (laughs) ladders.